the 10 worst movies of the year and we're going to begin this week with we bought a zoo coming in at number 10 i just reviewed this a couple weeks ago it stars matt damon in this incredibly forced family dramedy and has the most manipulative script of any film this year director cameron crowe tries to make you tear up in scene after scene after scene and the attempts at comedy are just as bad at number nine is in time an interesting premise and a promising start but quickly turns into a complete waste of time Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried walk through this uninspired action thriller. The plot has so many holes and gets more ridiculous as the movie goes on. At number eight, The Green Hornet. Seth Rogen starred in, co-wrote, and co-produced this action comedy that featured no good action and no laughs. The Green Hornet character is so unlikable, as is the 3D post conversion. The studio tried to bury it in early January, but I still remember how painful it was to watch, so it still makes the list. At number seven, Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwrecked. After a successful and enjoyable original and an okay squeakquel, the Chipmunks franchise has officially sunk. There are no funny jokes or situations, and it's filled with unnecessary songs. Making it through this movie was one of the most painful experiences of my professional career. Coming in at number six, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, which robbed all of our booty this past May. It's a disappointing fourth installment in the series. Johnny Depp had nothing to work with in a film with very little action, wit, or suspense. All right, now I actually saw that movie. I thought it was pretty good, but yeah. I, I, all your others I haven't seen, so I, okay. I can't wait. And you're the expert, but uh, I have to say that uh, you said squeak wool yes. for chipmunks. Let's just point yeah. out you said squeak wool. Yes, that's what the second right. one was called. Right, we're halfway there. Let's get to the big five, yes. your least favorite. Correct. Five. Number five is Cowboys and Aliens, another highly anticipated summer movie that was a real disappointment. Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig starred in this sci-fi western that's so uninteresting that even the actors seemed bored. Director John Favreau goes from the successful Iron Man films to this deathly slow and technically awful mess. At number four, Happy Feet 2. It's even worse than the original, which is saying a lot. A misguided storyline that actually puts hundreds of penguins in danger of dying. And I kept praying for the two annoying krill to be eaten. And the songs, please, no more singing penguins, no more dancing penguins, no more penguins, period. At number three, Spy Kids All the Time in the World. Now, whichever studio executive thought that we needed a fourth Spy Kids movie should be forced to watch this movie over and over on his next cross-country flight. It's by far the cheapest looking and cheesiest film of the year, with incredibly bad performances from Jessica Alba, Joel McHale, and Jeremy Piven, who plays three characters. And the 4D Smellorama gimmick stunk. Coming in at number two, The Three Musketeers, a complete mess from beginning to end. It's a film that didn't know what it wanted to be. Action film, comedy, historical drama, it's failed at all of them. It featured a completely bland cast. And as I said in my original review, all for one, but none for this. And now for the worst film of 2011. Steve, would you please do the honors? <laughs> Instead of an envelope, we've got a toilet paper. Correct. Because oh. it's the worst of the year. <laughs> Let's see what we Worst have. film of 2011 is. Here we go. Yes. Green Lantern is the worst movie of 2011. Ryan Reynolds stars in this superhero action film. He's completely misguided as a regular guy chosen to become the first human Green Lantern who then has to defeat the bad guys and save the world. We've seen everything in this movie before in countless other superhero films which are all done better than here. No originality in the story, action scenes, or the special effects. There are times you could practically see the green screen. In my original review, I actually complimented the makeup, but later, later completely regretted saying that. If I had to, to save my position as a film critic, I could sit through every other movie on this list again, except for this one. I'd have to resign instead. That's how much I disliked Green Lantern, my worst movie of 2011. Okay, yeah. for the record here, this is the first time I've unwrapped uh, toilet paper. Very good, honor, nice so that's, honor, that's yes. <laughs> Don't forget you can catch uh, Jackson every Saturday here on YNN or check out all of Jackson's picks anytime at his website, lights-camera-jackson.com.